Hey everyone, I'm Dave Evans, and this is Hardware Sessions. On today's episode, we're gonna be covering reliability testing and waterproofing. To help us out, we're walking over to meet with Hind Hobeka, founder of Instabeat. Instabeat is an attachment for your goggles to get real-time heart rate and lap times as you're swimming in the pool. Let's go dive in. Let's uh, jump into your product a little bit uh, All right. and learn some of these things. So uh, we talked a little bit about that you're a competitive swimmer. Generally, we build a product for ourselves. Yeah. First. So how do you not have a bias towards the design or what you think the perfect solution is versus maybe what the 50-year-old master swimmer that you said might be a target would be? Yeah, I mean, it's really hard and I don't have like a clear-cut answer to that. I think having a team makes it a little bit easier for you not to impose your ideas because you need to be respectful and mindful of their decisions. Also, I made it a point that most of the team members are swimmers and so they also have valid opinions that don't agree with mine. And so um, I try to be as open as possible, but it doesn't always work. And if something is not the way I want it, it bugs me so much. <laughs> but I don't voice it because I feel like I can't. Uh, we also try to do lots of um, pool tests and pool surveys. So I spend a lot of time at the pool actually talking to other swimmers. And I am from the school that observing is better than asking questions. So I actually go and just watch people using the product and it gives me a lot of insights on what the majority wants. But it's hard. It's not it's not easy and you don't realize that you're subjective yeah i love that observing rather than asking questions is yeah the answer yeah and i think that's really key um so maybe diving into some more of the technical stuff now you've been working on a vast variety of all these products <laughs> uh and you must have an immense amount of knowledge uh, yeah. learned. so maybe talk to me a little bit about how you guys conducted your first waterproof testing and, yeah. and how did you think about tackling that, that really hard challenge? You know, waterproofing is really, really difficult, especially when you are trying to build a product that is small and flexible. You can't just have a plastic box with gaskets and screws. And yeah, I mean, this it was kind of waterproof, but it was so big, like swimmers didn't want to wear it and didn't want to test it. And so we moved actually from this, the very first design, to this. So this is the form factor we established. And to be very honest with you, it took us almost a year before we were able to get in the water, just because I tried nail polish, it just wouldn't work. I tried epoxy, then it would fail after an hour uh, or it would crack because it needs to be flexible and mounted. We even tried like hand pouring silicone. It works for an hour, then it fails. The first real waterproofing test we were able to do was only when we actually did like with a professional uh, tooling, well, not a model shop. Mm -hmm. um, they actually did the over molding for us and this is when we were really really able to test in the water and um, understand the limitations of the product in the water. Do you have an understanding of what they did differently in terms of tooling or fixturing versus yeah. your handmade ones? So they have a better process first of all to cover the electronics in an epoxy that is actually waterproof and that will bond to the PCB, they let it dry and cure at the right temperature with the right amount of time. And then actually being able to work with the silicone that bonds to the epoxy so that there's actually like a chemical bond that yeah. wouldn't let water in. Yeah. That was the key in actually making the water, uh, the product waterproof. And we, you're not able to play, like you can't find the silicone just off the shelf and melt it in your oven. Like it's, it's not a thing. No, so... Um, we just try to hack solution. We use Sugru a lot. We use some cases that have uh, the plasti dip on top of it. It's there's so much chemicals. Your eyes fume after you swim with it. But you have to be creative, knowing that your prototypes are gonna fail, uh, just so that you're able to at least prove some of your sub assemblies before moving into uh, tooling. 
wear testing. I mean, so this looks like it broke, uh, maybe not the specific one, but something that I know about athletes is that they're super hard on their products. Yes. Um, and so how do you uh, think about keeping an athlete from destroying the product? Or maybe they're supposed to, uh, and how did that kind of come about? Yeah, so going back to the observing bit, if you observe the swimmers, they actually get out of the pool, take their goggles and throw them on the deck. And I'm like, shit, like, I have to design a product that people are going to throw on the deck. And you can't come and tell a swimmer who just swam for two hours and is starving, don't throw your goggles on the deck. Like, they're not going to respond very well. For us, having a rubbery, flexible product makes it a little bit easier because it absorbs, it deals with shock much better. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is definitely something that we've tested for. Like, we've thrown the product on walls in order to make sure that it works. And then I've also seen... Uh, swimmers like treat their goggles during their swim like super aggressively so we do all kinds of stretch testing in order to make sure that i mean it's eventually gonna break but at least not in the first few years no. uh, yeah. do you think about having to make a certain number for like the yield of prototypes so hey we want to do 10 users that are going to use this so i have to make 15 knowing that five will break and yes does that change in different stages yes and it depends on what you're testing so mm -hmm. um when we weren't doing water testing we were doing like 10 10 boards 10 prototypes at a time and we're able to get 10 people to test them when we actually went into water we got 50 boards for 10 people because wow. we knew that things are going to fail because of water because of yield because it's not the right material um, so yeah, you, you definitely have to account for that. Otherwise, your whole prototyping cycle becomes much slower. So you actually budgeted for five prototypes per user yeah. uh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and has that been a good metric for you of just like, yeah, that, that's about right? I mean, I don't think it's a rule of thumb, mm -hmm. but we've computed the hours of how much time this, we want the swimmer to spend in the water and how much time we think the device is going to survive. And then that was the rule for us. But I think depending on your application, that might change. Mm -hmm. So yeah. cool. I think uh, reliability test, the uh, very scientific one of the chuck against the wall. <laughs> uh, I think that's, that's a good thing. There's idea. a lot of very scientific things we do to <laughs> test this here. Uh, we call it the, the flex and the throw. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, we no, even no. have like big buckets of water here yeah. and then you just put your head in it and we stretch it. I mean, you have to get creative. Like we don't have the ability to go to very expensive test labs to do these kind of tests. We need something that's representative enough. Mm -hmm. So we, we get creative, so yeah. A bucket of water and uh, yeah, I mean, wash just dip your, your hair a couple of times. Oh, that's fine, I'm used to that, so that's fine. <laughs> that's good. Um, so let's talk a little bit around sealing. So when you talk about any type of electronics uh, with yeah. waterproofing, Sealing is always the hardest thing. Do you guys use O-rings or gaskets? In our prototypes, yes. In the final product, no. Okay. So the way we make our final product waterproof is that we have a protective layer on top of the PCB mm -hmm. that is some kind of resin that mm -hmm. protects it from water, but also from pressure and temperature of the overmolding. Mm -hmm. And then we overmold the entire product with a uh, kind of uh, TPU mm -hmm. rubber. Uh, and so this is actually what uh, makes sure that the product is waterproof. Mm -hmm. Our limitation is that it needs to be flexible. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so you see this arm needs to bend depending on the goggle size. If the goggles are big, it needs to bend more. If they're small, it needs to bend less. And so we can't afford to have something that's super rigid. And we didn't want to have any room for the water to go in by having a rigid plastic here and then going to a flexible plastic here so we just decided to overmold the whole thing wonderful yeah that's that's really interesting so when you were doing the initial prototypes were any of your gaskets or o-rings custom made or you tried to stick just to off the shelf which we tried to stick to off the shelf yeah. because it was uh it would have taken so much more time to um to actually custom made but then we ended up with much bigger prototypes so mm -hmm. they weren't representative. Like, again, it's sub-assembly testing. So for example, we were testing heart rate with a device that was like two times bigger than this. Mm -hmm. So if someone told us it's annoying, uh, I don't want to wear it, or it's making my goggles leak, I don't want to wear it, then you can't do anything. Even though you're not testing for fit, you're testing for heart rate, yeah. but you, you just can't make the test because of this limitation. So it definitely limits you a lot. Mm -hmm. but time versus cost versus yeah 
quality all, yeah. the, way, all the way around. Exactly. Um, something I thought that was really interesting you talked about was the bucket of water for the yeah. testing. Would you, could you share with us maybe some of the other unique uh, reliability testing that you've done where you said, hey, a lab does it this way, we can simulate 90% of it this way <laughs> and like expose a little bit of like the how creative I think engineers are. Yeah, so uh, we've done accelerated life testing by using fridges and uh, ovens. Okay. So we put it at really high temperature because we think what if you're in Saudi Arabia and you leave your device in the car and then you go to a really cold pool. So we put it in the oven for X minutes and then we put it in the fridge for X minutes and then we have to test for uh, functionality. Mm -hmm. um, we've also done lots of uh, stretch testing, so that's not very creative, but we actually had a person do this mm -hmm. for a thousand times instead of using the machine. Um, yeah, what else did we use the bucket of water a lot yeah. for the light pipe testing and actually showing the real time display like we've had the bucket of water at the on the window outside and then we have one of the team members sticking their head out to get to get the sunshine in order to test reliably in the water. I mean, yeah. And then beyond that, you, it sounds like you're actually doing real user testing as well. Yes, so we do re real user testing. We try to recruit all kinds of swimmers, uh, not just by performance, but also by head shape and also by uh, heart conditions, I would say, just because we try to find what are the corner cases where our device could potentially fail and test for those just to make sure that we're mitigating them either in the design or in the communication, at least if it's not possible in the design. That's, that's super interesting. It sounds like you guys do a lot of testing. Yeah. Um, something that I would love to learn more about. I'm actually curious, it's not even on here. How, how do you organize a lot of the data in, in like have intent? So we will do a head and a bucket test to measure this. And how do you know if that passes or fails? It's, it's a lot of trial and error. Okay. It's, we have three test engineers that okay. their full-time job is just to test. And um, I'm obviously always testing also. Um, it's a lot of iterations, honestly. Like I can talk about the ergonomic testing, for example. So the idea is that we want that any person in the world picks any goggles that they like to wear and they put Instabi on it and it needs to work. And at first we thought it needs to work is, okay, they just swim freestyle and then it's fine. If it doesn't leak, it's great. But then we realized that when people push off the wall, actually that's when the real leakage happens. But that only took us a few tests in the water to identify that source. We, only, we also had some people leak when it breathes because their cheek is pushing up the device. So these are all things that you learn while running your initial setup experiment. And then you, like, you modify your protocol in order to account for these corner case scenarios. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's experience, it's knowing the product really well, it's using it yourself. I think it's really important that every single person on the team uses the product and not just the test engineers because they get used to the product a lot so they stop seeing mm -hmm. what newbies could see. So I have everyone on the team test all the time. Everyone, so a hiring requirement for you is you must stick your head in a bucket of water in order to test. <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's, it's, you're not joking. It's, uh, if you look at our angel list uh, post, it's actually must swim at least one stroke. Mm. I, I don't think I can have at least today on my team someone that's afraid of water. Mm. Like everyone needs to get in the water at least once because yeah, it's, we're a product company and we're only trying to push one product. So it's really important that everyone knows how to use it, at least tries it, has some connection to it because that's all you're working yeah. towards. Every day. Yeah, that's exactly. I love it. Um, so the last question, uh, well, I have two. First one is what resources around waterproofing would you give to an engineer today that has to go learn on it? Is there a textbook, a website, a, a video that you watched, anything? Um, you know, the fictive blog actually, and I'm not just saying this because <laughs> you're here, but you guys had a great article on gaskets and O-rings and how to do the waterproofing. And we actually got inspired by that to do our big bulky cases for the heart rate testing. Uh, otherwise, I, I think there are lots of like hobbyists in articles online, especially instructables on like how to waterproof things. I don't think they work very well. Mm -hmm. I think w we know the materials that work for us and they're like silicone, epoxy, and then Sugru is good sometimes depending on the application. 
and we always try to use a combination of those uh, in order to test in the water. That's cool. Uh, thanks for the plug in. I'm glad to hear it's actually. No, it's, actually I'm, it's real. It's, I'm, I'm not joking. It's, <laughs> it's a real <laughs> statement. Well, it's good to hear. We'll keep writing more technical content. Yeah. Um, so, the last question is if you could tell yourself five years ago something just about waterproofing, I'll narrow <laughs> it down. What would you tell yourself five years ago that you wish you knew uh, kind of as you were first uh, starting Institute? So, I think there are two elements to it. I think, first of all, the psychological element of waterproofing is that I used to get frustrated so much about units failing in the water and didn't understand why nail polish wasn't working. And I keep telling my team this, like the last generation product, we weren't able to test until we properly, all of the this, this assembly, until we went to a professional model shop. And that's really important to know because first of all you don't want to get frustrated along the way if units fail and second of all you want to get creative of testing sub assemblies first mm -hmm. but without trying to like make it all in one go oh, because okay. it's it's gonna fail so you want to do small testing that prove out the main elements and then rely on uh, the experts in, and the real materials in order to put everything together so planning and, and budgeting and don't get frustrated when things don't go right. Yeah, because yeah. It, it skews the way you want to test, actually. So test sub-assemblies first and then the full assembly. Yeah. It, Fabulous. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for spending the time. I, yeah. I learned so much personally. <laughs> I feel like I'm a waterproofing expert now. Perfect. So. Then maybe you can help, help us yeah, out. <laughs> I'm actually going to go do some CAD now. <laughs> so uh, thanks so much. Really yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. Cool. Good night. You look great. I I mean I feel great.